Hello everyone and welcome to our channel once again. We are continuing our videos on Photoshop and color separation for screen printing. So today we're going to be discussing grayscale and how to prepare a black and white image for screen printing. So let's dive in. So right here on the screen we have a black and white picture. Um, we obviously are going to be doing a black ink on a white t-shirt and um, what we need to do is we need to prepare this file for um, for screen printing. So we have to be able to output a film, burn it, the image onto our screen and um, and create this image using black ink. Um, so this is typically a process which we refer to as a grayscale. And um, for that, we're going to need to do a few steps. But the first thing we want to do is pretty much get rid of the background, the white background that we have right here around this image. Okay. This is going to help us do a few more steps down the road. So what we are going to do first is check our image resolution because here is where a lot of our issues begin. Uh, so our file right now measures 13 inches wide by 13 inches high and it has a resolution of 72. So obviously we kind of fish that out of Google and uh, that's okay. There are quite a few things out there that we could use. The most important thing though is to number one, adjust the size that we want to make the image to be. So if we are planning on putting this on a large or extra large shirt, ideally something like an 11 uh, inch image would be perfect. Another thing we want to adjust is the resolution right here. So we want to make that at least 300 DPI. Um, once we're able to do that, we're going to be, um, we're going to have an image that's a little bit better um, to output in film and then get a, a much better um, resolution while printing. So we've already taking care of the resolution and the size, which is step number one. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come here to our uh, tools in Photoshop and we're going to take our magic wand. So now magic, the magic wand tool, it, as soon as we select that, we'll see up here how it controls the parameters. So right now the tolerance of this tool is at 10%. So that means that she will select anything related to the color that I pick uh, with a tolerance of about 10%, which meaning I don't want it to be that tolerant. The higher the tolerance, the more likely it is to pick things that are not meant to be picked, such as this gray area right here. So if I select the background, right, and I see how the border right here, it goes in, but it doesn't really take any of this gray area right here. Um, it's respecting this area right over here as well. So I think at 10%, this is good. Sometimes we may need to adjust this up to 15, 20%, depending, or sometimes we even need to bring that down so it's even less tolerant. Um, but right now it seems to be working for us okay. So I'm gonna use my delete button on my keyboard and uh, and just kind of delete that. If I get this, um, this, picture, this uh, box right here, this box right here means that I am own, I'm not able to delete it. I'm only able to change the color of the background, and I don't want to do that. And the reason for that is because this image right here has been locked because this is a JPEG file that we got off the Internet. So what we're going to do is we're going to cancel here. We're going to double-click our lock, and then we're going to try that once again. So now I'm going to hit... Um, let me cancel here. This is our layer style menu. We don't need that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and hit delete once again. So now our image um, has been, uh, background has been removed. So we're going to go ahead and click those areas down there too, just so we can get rid of that. So what remains is pretty much a grayish area, um, which we're not going to really do much with it. Um, we're not going to change any of that. I think this is good as it is right there. Um, the background has already been removed. So now we have the actual image to work with. Okay. I'm going to go to my moving tool and this is going to put a box around my image. And then right here under properties, 
um, I'm, I'm checking to see what the size of my file is. My file is 10 and a half, which is a pretty good standard size for a large or an extra large t-shirt. Uh, what I would do next is obviously a, apply what we refer to as a color halftone. If we output this film right now, what's going to happen is the areas that are black will develop what we need is basically um, dots in the areas that are gray. Only because if we if we try to develop the image with these gray areas here on the film, the emulsion will not, unfortunately, develop anything. Um, I would also try to um, increase our resolution a little further and perhaps take it up to 450 or 600 depending on what I see here when I create my halftones. So in the meantime, I'm okay removing my background. I'm okay setting it at a minimum of 300 DPI, which is as, you know, as good as we could go right now. And um, the next the next step would be for us to take our filter uh, down to pixelate and color halftone. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to turn everything to dots. But before we do that, because this is a black and white file, we don't really want to have it on RGB mode. In other words, we want to have this as a grayscale, black or white, that would be what we want. I'm going to go ahead and discard what we got here. And um, now we have a, if I go to image once again and I have mode, I'm, at, I'm in grayscale. That's perfect. I'm going to try filter, pixelate, color halftone once again. I want to go ahead and convert this to four. And I'm going to leave my degrees of my angles of my screen in the same order that you see here. These, this is basically something that we're going to discuss a little later so you guys can see the difference on these angles right here. And this is this is sort of the pattern that you're going to generate the dots in. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that a little further down the road. So like I said, we're going to change our radius to four and, um, and then we're going to click OK. So as soon as we do that, our file has now been um, pixelated to half tones. Now, like I said earlier, let's bring this down to the actual size that this file is going to be, which is somewhere around here. And if we can perceive the dots, perhaps we prefer a higher resolution in order to avoid the dots being so big. Maybe we want our dots to be a little bit smaller. So because we cannot go lower than four pixels on our, on our pixel size, then we are going to need to then increase our resolution. But we can't do that after we've already applied this filter. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a step back right here under edit. We're going to go to undo color halftone. So we're bringing the file back before we applied that filter. We're going to go to image. We're going to go to image size one more time. We're going to come in here and we're going to put 450. And we're going to click OK. And we're going to wait for that to, there we go. Now it's good. And then we're going to apply that color halftone once again. Now we could click it right here because we've already done it once. So, but I want, I want to do it the, the long way. So we're going to come down to pixelate over to color halftone, make sure we have it on our max radius at four and then click. Okay. So now our dots are far smaller than what we had before, which gives us a little bit more resolution, I think. And, um, and, 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 you know, a question that I always get asked is, you know, what if, you know, why not go to 500? Why not go to 600? Keep in mind that the smaller the dot begins to get, the harder it's going to be for us to burn it on a screen because the goal here is to output this in a film and then burn it on a screen. So if you're typically we're working with a 280, 305 mesh, um, you know, 450 resolution is pretty good. And the size on that dot is rather small. If we go any higher on the resolution, that dot starts to become smaller. And then that's going to be harder for us to be able to burn that image. So um, I always like to start at 300, but I don't want to ever go above 600 on our resolution. Um, and if I can get away with 
450, then that's as far usually that I'd like to go. Uh, so right now we have um, our file the way exactly we need it. We can output this um, and we can go ahead and burn it um, in a 305 mesh and we will do a grayscale on a white t-shirt and um, that basically are the steps to be able to handle something like that. In, in addition to what we've discussed here today, the only thing I would like to add is um, perhaps we want to go ahead and put some uh, registration marks um, on, the, on this image. I know it's a one color and typically registration marks, we want to save them when we're doing more than one color. But I, I will say this, registration marks allow us to be able to center our image correctly onto our, um, onto our screen and also it will help us. Um, align it onto our shirt straight. So I would encourage everyone to put a registration mark, something simple. It could be something as simple as a plus sign. And um, again, it's one on the top and one on the bottom here. I'm just going to go ahead and center that for us right here. And we'll go down here and get it situated right there. So basically I use my text tool, okay, to type up a plus sign right above the image and right below. And I just basically copied it and moved it down. So the purple lines that you saw here, for example, if I click here and I want to move this a little bit, I will use my shift key and then my shift key when I'm holding it down and I'm clicking and dragging an object, it's going to keep it right aligned with the other one that I did, almost like a pair of twins. So they're going to go right in the same spot and I don't have to worry if my hand is shifting slightly and I haven't gotten the hang of, of creating a duplicate and, and aligning in the spot where it needs to be. So shift, hold down while click and dragging it, we'll do that. now. A lot of people always say, hey, I'm not getting those purple lines. What am I doing wrong? So everything that you see here in Photoshop, whether from your tools or over here in your command area for all your all your uh, all the stuff that we're doing, like your properties, your layers, your channels, all of that you can find under window. And you want to make sure that at the very least you have your layers on, your properties on. I like history, for example, because I like to go back and undo certain things that I did. Um, channels are very important, as, you know, because it could tell you whether a file is RGB or CMYK or grayscale, etc. Uh, so these are kind of like the most popular stuff right here. These are kind of defaults that come up. So if you're not using any of these other things, then by all means, you could just delete them like patterns and gradients. I mean, these are quick keys if you if you would, but I wouldn't I wouldn't have all of this open unnecessarily. Just focus on the stuff that you need and open up room here so you can see what you have. So history is important for me. Properties is definitely a must. Layers and channels are important. Um, and uh, and color is good. So those are probably going to be my my top four that I always want to have on. Now, the purple lines. So purple lines is going to be more like under view. So under view, we're going to have things like the ruler up here. We're going to see uh, under show, we're going to see our smart guides. So did you see how I have a check mark here? That means that I have them on. So every time I move an object, I'll get that purple line telling me you were in the middle. And, uh, and therefore, um, um, I get to see what I'm doing correctly. So... Anyway, guys, this is it. This is the end right here. This is ready to be outputted. I've already went ahead and got the uh, registration marks at the top and the bottom in the center of the object. So all I have to do now is simply go file, print, select by printer, and off it goes. The next video that we're going to go into is going to be more along the lines of the, um, the full color CMYK. And then we'll do something more like a spot separation um, just so that we can cover all the three most important separations in screen printing. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to hear from you guys soon.